Hi guys! We got here and right away, just from landing and driving to our amazing hotel, the La Mamunia in Marrakesh, I was blown away. Like, look at this tile, are you kidding me? We got driven to this hotel as we were waiting to check into our room. I was wandering around the lobby, and, like touching all of the walls, looking at the fireplaces and like the floors. Like even this wall that is behind me, this is all hand carved. My master. Wow. Oh my goodness. So beautiful. Bathroom number one. Hi. Right. You guys are just hanging out. Chilling. Okay. Hello, Marcos. Marrakesh. We have arrived. Bonjour. Our tour guide, whose name is Kareem is the most amazing man ever. He was born here in Morocco. He's my Moroccan father now, that's for sure. My name is Karim. Adil, who is our driver, and he is so sweet too. Hi, I'm Adil. One of the things we wanted to do in the first day was go to the Medina. It's like this crazy marketplace where there's like fruit vendors and shops and just so many people in and out. You can hear the snake charmer's music playing. I don't have that big of a problem with snakes. I'm actually okay with it. And so this guy had this, this cobra snake and of course I needed to have a photo. But that was really fun and a little terrifying, but I did it. Seriously, done. And then after that, it was time to go back to the hotel because we were all exhausted after traveling for so long. What do you want? Go and swim with me. Nari. <laughs> you can go swimming by yourself. <laughs> Come over here. What are you doing? I'm going to tell you something. Come here. Are you going to push me in? No, that's not I have my phone. You see this phone right here? <laughs> Sammy, don't pull anything. Give me your hand. <laughs> a deal that I made with Sammy was if I went swimming with her because I was really tired and didn't want to go, she would give me a back massage. Oh, uh, yeah. This is what you get for doing crappy chest flies at the gym. I was being really silly with my workout. Well, you shouldn't have because now you're in pain. Anyway, so that's what happened with that. I got a nice massage to finish off the day. Day two, we went shopping in the Medina. Oh my God, I'm <laughs> so happy in here. I got a few tea sets because the trays that they bring your food in or the tea sets or the cloths to wash your hands are all so beautiful from the soap dispensers to the tissue box holders and then let's talk about the pottery because the pottery out here is stunning it's painted to perfection in every single color under the rainbow yes we are inside the old town in the medina are you happy girls so yeah. you're happy too <laughs> i'm so stressed look at my bowl so much beautiful things mm -hmm. do you like my bowl Yes, they are beautiful. I am absolutely loving Morocco right now. It is so beautiful. Probably in my top three places I've ever been to. Um, and I'm going crazy with the shopping. It's like I can't control myself. <laughs> We're moving to Morocco. We're moving to Morocco. Look at these bags. It's beautiful. Knowing that I'll be here for a few more days is the only way that they got me out of the market. Otherwise, I would have stayed there all night until they shut it down because I was just looking around like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> We've been shopping for like six hours. And so um, they had a horse-drawn carriage awaiting us. And I was really excited about this. Horse-drawn carriage at sunset. La da da, la da da. Adios. Yeah. Okay. So right now we are taking a horse-drawn carriage around Marrakesh. As you can see, this is the view right now. And the standards here in Marrakesh are actually very good for the they horses. They treat yes, they treat. The normally, I would better. not be up for it. Um, but these horses are always getting checked by the veterinarians to make sure that they're not overworked and so therefore that is 
why we are here. Yes. We did the horse-drawn carriage and went back to our hotel from the Medina and it was like picture perfect. The sun was setting and just so happy and content. Dinner reservations booked at this hotel called La Sultana. We had a drink first up top on the rooftop terrace and it overlooked this market. This market was so lively and I think it was like 10 o'clock at night. I would have taken more video but it was extremely dark in there so we didn't get much of the inside. Then we went downstairs and had such a delicious meal. Everything here is so fresh and with the spices and everything that they use out here, it's so flavorful. It was just the perfect ending to another wonderful day. The next day, I was really excited about uh, because we were going to this local organic farm. It was in the direction we were heading towards the Atlas Mountains, which are huge and all snow-capped and so beautiful. And on our way to this organic farm, there were just pastures and pastures of green. It almost looked fake. And they grow poppies here in Morocco. So you'd have these beautiful red poppies sprouting out of the ground with these green pasture and then a donkey walking by and then a whole herd of lambs just passing and a couple cows out there and chickens and then a river coming down from the Atlas Mountains. I mean, you can't even paint a prettier picture than what we saw on the way to this farm. Our tradition in Morocco that when we receive our guests, we offer them milk and our local dates. met with the head chef whose name was Chef Tarek. We met this guy who was a tea master and there's a certain way to make it. This is all sugar. walking around and I had a wicker basket that he handed me and I was picking carrots out of the ground and potatoes and different legumes and onions. All of their food is from the garden. There's nothing more satisfying than pulling it out of the ground and then being able to eat it right after. It even tastes like a million times better. <gasps> so pretty. Mm, these are so good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we are about to cook today, right? Yes. You're gonna teach me how to make uh, chicken in, tagine, chicken tagine, lamb tagine, lamb tagine, vegetable tagine, vegetarian tagine, and, and three kinds of salad, and three kind of salads, yeah. and you said a dessert. Right? One is a surprise. Ah, I'm so excited! <laughs> Look at my hat. It was really cool because not only do I like to eat food from different places and try different things and different cultures and everything, but I also love to learn how to make it so that when I go back home, I can do it myself. And then we went to this school um, while we were waiting for the food to cook, and it was this local school in the Berber colony, and basically the Berbers are a group of people that are sort of the indigenous Moroccans. How many people live in this community? There are, I think, about 100 people, okay? 100. Only 100 people. It was so cute because we pulled up and all of the kids just started running out. They just had the biggest smiles on their faces. Oh, it was so much fun. Anytime you put kids around me, I'm like so happy. And I love meeting different kids from around the world. Say hi. Say hi. Look, I can see you all. <laughs> so cute. And then they let me plant a tree out front on their school. Shakran. Shakran. And then we walked back and had a beautiful lunch outside on the grass. I mean, this looks really good. We made it. So, so yummy. 
from farm to table, fresh. Black Mitchell. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Professional chef. I've been hired to work here now, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. It wasn't that good. Three. <laughs> we got yeah. So that was our day, and it couldn't have been better. You guys see last night's episode? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's coming today. You're the best in the bed, yeah, okay? Yeah. wanted to do which was going up in an air balloon I'm a little scared I thought from like after skydiving and you know several times and being up in airplanes my entire life that this was gonna be no big deal. because it was a little bit windier than it usually is they actually had the basket like horizontal and we had to slide into it so I was actually like laying down horizontal until the air balloon got lifted up enough so we could stand up vertically and then obviously the basket just lifted up above the ground until you couldn't see the trees anymore. Then clouds started taking over, everything just became white. So as I'm saying that, I'm like, yeah, we can't see anything else but just white. But then I turned around and the sun was coming up through the clouds. So we were sitting above the most puffy, beautiful, airy, white clouds. And then we had this burst of sunlight. And it was the sun that was rising and it was just picture perfect. Amazing and like, I don't even know. I don't even know. This is so crazy from anything else I've ever done. Even jumping out of a plane. We do have a little GoPro, see a little guy. Hey, little guy. Capturing everything. This is a typical American pancake. This is salmon, this is fried, this is pancake not fried, and this is a traditional bread. You have honey and olive oil. This is the women of our staff that is preparing the, the breakfast, and this is how people have breakfast here. It was like non-bread almost, and they had organic honey. Kind of like how we have maple syrup and waffles or French toast, they had their version of that. And then of course we had sherry tea is the Moroccan mint tea, which I can't get enough of. Then we headed over to go to the school, Education for All. It was a girls boarding house and um, we got to meet these amazing young women who are going to school, although the communities and the areas that they grew up in don't have any schools close by. How many girls do you have going to university now? Nine. Nine. That's amazing. And in the houses is 149. 149 in the house. And also for the community, they give them everything because it is free. They're all dedicated to learn more, so that's amazing. It gives these young girls an opportunity to get an education so that they can get a great job and they can support themselves and you know then their families and then their communities but it doesn't force them to just have to get married at a young age these girls have big dreams and like I always tell them you know whatever you put your mind to and if you really believe in it you can achieve it and they're getting that education and they're putting so much hard work and dedication into it so what are they doing now let's see so can you ask them something yeah, sure. can you ask them what do they want to do when they're if they could do anything, what is yeah. their goal? What do they want to do? You could be a journalist, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, medicine, medicine, pilot, many, many, many things. You could be anything. 
sugar yes. cuisine. <laughs> but these girls learning and getting an education is beneficial for everybody, for the world. Yes. So it's all good and it's worth it. But that's amazing that you have this and so you're having to expand. Thank you for letting us come in here. Thank you. Thank you. Keep going. I hope to see you all being math teachers and lawyers. Then we were heading to the high Atlas Mountains. We were going to this place that was a really cool hotel and the only way to get there was to take mules. I kept calling them donkeys, but mules are donkeys, but like horses combined. And so I kept saying that we were riding donkeys up. We weren't, we rode mules. Okay, so right now we yeah. are on the donkeys heading up. <laughs> Everybody's laughing at me because I have a selfie stick in my hand, but for those of you that think <laughs> selfie sticks aren't cool, this is the only way I'd be able to get this shot, so I love them. All on the donkey. <laughs> the view heading up there was so beautiful, and I just kept looking at Sammy and Sky and everybody else we were with and being like, are you kidding? And although it's only like two hours away, it is a little bit more isolated. You're, you know, living on the mountains. So right now, that's a prayer calling. Taking mules One, down at night time. It's not scary at all. It's like so scary. It's, funny, it's a 90 degree angle. So scary. Riding a mule at night time. We were leaving around 10, 10 30 at night and it was pitch black. We had to go down the same way we came up, which was on the mules, on a very steep incline, <laughs> decline. They did end up telling us, because I pulled out my phone and I was like, I think the mule needs a flashlight. And the guy was like, no, 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 don't insult them. They know their way. So I was like, okay. I don't know if he was just telling me that to make me feel more comfortable, but it did, so it worked and we made it down. I had said out loud, before we finished the season five of Pretty Little Liars that on my hiatus I wanted to go traveling. And I actually had a list of places that I'd always wanted to go. All four of the places that I've been able to go to on my hiatus have happened. That is what I love to do. Traveling the world, getting to meet amazing people, experience different cultures, taste different foods. It doesn't get better than that. Thank you to Epic Road for putting together such a beautiful itinerary and really making the most out of the days that we were there in Marrakesh. I'll have lots more to tell you, part two, so stay tuned. That's it for now. I gotta go to sleep really early because we are waking up at 5 a.m. I'll have a lot more words to describe Morocco for you in the next video. Good night!